Speakers and Cleats, the podcast. UTSA defeated Houston Christian 45-7. Obviously, that's not a surprise. The line on the game was 35 and a half. I think it was just good to see them kind of clicking on all cylinders for, for a game, and I think it can give them some confidence. Um, how do you guys think that can kind of propel them into conference play as they go into ECU this week? What's the line at ECU? I don't know. Actually, I can look. Uh, I don't know that it propels them. That's going to be a tough game to win. ECU, first of all, East, I watched the entire ECU Liberty game because it was it was – uh, delayed by like three and a half hours, four hours. So I was finally home and I was watching it. ECU should have won that ball game. They can't stop a corner route to save their lives, but they should have won that ball game against Liberty. They're they're a good team. Yeah. What do you think, Chuck? Does uh, UTSA get a little bit of a boost from this? this I, I think so. I mean, because you know, for whatever every, anybody thinks of Houston Christian, they scored seventy points the week before, I believe. So to go out knowing that you had to show some growth, I think. You know, on the field and off the field, maybe for your own mental psyche going into this, you showed that you can dominate another team. It's the same thing I thought about Texas the other night. Maybe a little bit of a slow start in their game, but now there's something to be said about handling your business and handling your business well. When you know that, you know, maybe you haven't put your best foot forward and that you're trying to gain some momentum and see some growth as you go into the gauntlet part of your schedule. So, you know, good for UTSA, and yeah, I think they did make some growth. Again, the other guys are getting paid to, you know, literally and figuratively. <laughs> guess the line. So, guess the line in that game: ECU, UTSA. Nine, it's a three, three o'clock kick in them. in ECU. Nine ECU giving UTSA nine. Nine. Yeah, it's a lot. You gonna say pick? Yeah, four. Four is the line on that game, which is a little bit closer than I thought it would be. Actually, I, I would, I would say it would be like a. Six and a half point because ECU's played a lot better than a lot of people um, give them credit for. Someone who is going to give uh, Jeff Trailer a lot of credit or give ECU a lot of credit is Jeff Trailer. Let's hear from him what he said on uh, about ECU Saturday. I don't know that we're quite ready to go up there and uh, do that yet, but we've got to find a way to go up there and do that. And um, I want to give my kids every opportunity though, because we've we've been you know cleaner at home twice. And um, hadn't been so good on the road. I and mean, we've got an extremely tough opponent that we have a, a ton of respect for. And um, it'll, it'll be an absolute slobber knocker up there. <laughs> I had to include the slobber knocker part. It's classic. Coach Tom Foolery. It's going to be a really good game, I think. Um, but I do think that seeing success on the field, no matter who you're playing, whether it's Houston Christian or Texas or whatever, can give you confidence going into this. Do you guys think that they're ready for this AAC conference to start their conference yeah, play? Yeah, yeah, they're ready. They're going to be they're going to be good this year. I just don't. I think ECU is really, really good. I, and, and being on the road is tough. I, the McCown kid's been good the last two weeks. He was a, he was decent against Texas, and he's shown growth. I mean, he was really bad against Texas State, and he's been yeah, better he since horrible. then. And he was whole team was horrible. Good this game, week, he was re- like Chuck said. You know, you want to. Show that you can do what you're supposed to do, and and he did that. His rhythm's better, his timing's better, and don't forget, this kid completed 15 balls in a row at Tennessee last year in a tough environment with 105,000 people there. So it won't be him. Uh, it's whether or not they can protect him. And Makai Hart's getting back and playing a lot more. JT snaps. Clark might come back. Vinley's back. I don't think JT's going to be back this week, but um, soon. We'll see. Maybe after the bye. Yeah, maybe after the bye. Chuck, what do you think going into AAC play? I'm I'm in a kind of see it mode. Need right to see now. it to believe it. I need to, I mean, yeah, let's watch the East Carolina game, see what comes of it. I think it's going to be a, a good game. And then, you know, we'll see if they can find some magic maybe towards the end of the game because, you know, to be in a close game, I think at this point is going to prove a lot going forward. If they can find a way to, to win one late and then. You know, maybe if they see it themselves, maybe that's the inertia that propels them the rest of the year. My thing is that you get basically the four easiest opponents left on your schedule over the next five weeks. You get ECU, then a bye, then you're at Rice, who is just bad. They're just a very bad team. Um, FAU just got rolled by, I want to say it was an FCS team, one of the worst teams in, in college football this past week, and then they're at Tulsa. So 
that's a 4 and 0 schedule if you can take advantage of the games. If you can do the right things, if you can do all the little things that coach Trailer always talks about. If you can do it, you start AAC 4 and 0 and then you go have Memphis come into the Alamo Dome and that's going to be a huge game even though Memphis lost this past weekend which was surprising to Navy. The other takeaway for me with this team is the amount of true freshmen that Trailer's playing. I mean, he's got five running backs, right? I mean, we've all seen Robert Henry. We've all seen Brandon High is really good. Yeah, he's playing Brandon High. The the kid, the Jamel Hardy kid with the catch, he reminds you of of JT. He's got recruits, uh, some transfers, but a lot of really young guys. Willie McCoy and Devin McCune are both sophomores. Jeff Trailer just keeps adding talent to this team. I thought we could see Kavorian Barnes. Uh, Robert Henry, Rocco Griffin, all year long. Now we're seeing uh, Anderson High. and Brandon High. These kids are fast as lightning. True freshmen that can play. They're also different backs. Like I feel like Rocco and Robert and Kavorian are all similar. very similar backs. One cut, get up the field. Brandon High is a different change of pace, which is kind of nice for that running game, especially if you're trying to run the outside zone, the stretch, and all those kinds of things. Yeah, so. and I think some of this is, too, they're experimenting a little bit, right? right? Want to see who can play and who can't, who you're going to go forward with. You get, don't get any more experiment time. It's it's conference play It's time now, to go. So it's time to go. Yeah. You, play, you play who can play at this point. Uh,